Part 1. White Clouds. Horsebow Moon. Rumors of a Reaper. As cold air begins to creep in from the north of Fargus, Fodlin welcomes the riches of fall. The women spend their days reaping the golden fields, gratefully embracing the bounty the goddess has once again provided. The men venture into the wilds with horse bows and empty sacks ready to be filled with game. As I believe you are already aware, Sedith's younger sister Flane has gone missing. At present, all we know for certain is that she has not left Garrick Mach. Flane is not the type of person to just wander off on her own without telling me where she is going. We have searched the monastery thoroughly, but have found nothing. I am now mobilizing the knights to begin searching the town. Troubling rumors have been running rampant lately. I do not wish to consider the worst, but... There are rumors of someone prowling the streets and attacking innocents night after night. The knights have investigated the matter. They have not discovered any remains, nor have they found any concrete evidence. The people are panicked. They all insist someone called the Death Knight is coming to claim their souls with his blade. There is no way she could have escaped unscathed if she were captured by such a fiend. Where is she? Seteth, recall that impatience begets error. Please do your best to calm yourself. I think of your sister as family as well. You know that. You have my support. We will devote ourselves fully, mind, body, and soul, to recovering her. Professor, your mission for this month is to help find Flane. The Knights have the town covered, so I ask that you focus your efforts on searching the monastery again. We do not have time to waste. You have your orders. What? Flane is missing? So, finding Flane is our mission for the month, I take it? Wait. Who's Flane? Sedith's little sister. Surely you've seen her flitting about the monastery. She is the girl who looks about the same age as me, but seems well beyond her years. Sedith is much older than Flane. He's always looking out for her. He must be worried sick. If I were to go missing, I can't imagine what that would do to my brother. When searching for something, it's best to start by gathering information. Hopefully, someone has seen Flame.
You have my thanks for giving me your spare time. I have gratitude. Perfect temperature. Yes. Yes. What? Ocean is far from Garrig Mach. I am feeling a bit lonely at times. I'm not in agreement. I will be waiting happily for you to be inviting me again. It's due to your poor judgment. Ah, shucks! I guess I did it! All that hard work's paid off.
Um... Hmm. Um... Claude? Hmm? Oh, Marianne. Have the gods taken pity on my lost soul and revealed a sign to me? I've been researching the ten elites of Fodlan, but I can't tell fact from fiction. Anyhow, what can I help you with? Well, um, I found this pendant, and I think it's yours. Ah, right you are. Yeah, honestly, I've resigned myself to never seeing it again. It's a keepsake from my uncle, who has passed on. If I truly lost it, my grandfather would have had my head. Thanks for returning it to me, Marianne. You saved my tale. Please, it was nothing. I should be... No, I think that's enough researching for today. Why don't you join me for a nice chat? I just came to deliver the pendant. Sounds awfully lonely to only talk to those whom you have business with. Do you really dislike talking to people that much? It's just... I never know what to say. I'm sorry. No need to apologize. We'll figure it out as we go. Tell me, are you like this with your father too? Within the Alliance, Margrave Edmund is prone to debate. With a father like that, I would have thought... Margrave Edmund is my adoptive father. Oh, is he? I didn't know. Where were you born? That is none of your concern. I, um, I really must be going. She's hiding something, that much is clear. Ah, but that just makes me all the more desperate to know her secrets. Lysithia, do you have a moment? There is a matter of significance I'd like to discuss with you. I know you're always seeking the attention of ladies, but why are you wasting your breath on me? Don't be silly. I want to discuss the future of the Alliance, to have a constructive and candid exchange of opinion. I'm not so sure I'm the one being silly. Actually, I'm busy. Stuff to do. Now, hold on just a moment. House Ordelia will never benefit from such a narrow-minded mentality. I was under the impression you were interested in me as a person. What do house matters have to do with anything? As it stands, the bonds between Alliance Lords are quite weak. If this state of affairs persists, I'm afraid those bonds may dissolve entirely. I couldn't care less. House Ordelia may be small, but a small house is fettered by fewer obligations than a larger one. Apply yourselves actively in diplomacy, negotiate wisely, and you could do much to help maintain peace among the neighboring lords. The recognition of those lords would benefit your house immensely. To that end, why not start with me, the heir to House Gloucester? It couldn't hurt for us to become friends, could it? Yes, yes, of course, when the time comes. But right now, I'm quite busy. Maybe later. As it is, I'm studying magic for the benefit of the Alliance, and I would appreciate it if you left me to it. Ah, I see. Then forgive the intrusion. I will take my leave of you for now. But if there is any way I can be of help to you or your house, I hope that you won't hesitate to ask. After all, as I'm sure you know, the future of the Alliance is my responsibility. <laughs> the future, he says. <laughs> As though I have a future. Hey, Lawrence, got a minute? Certainly. I trust you're well? Doing great. I found a load of old weapons, just got done hauling them out of storage. Old weapons, you say? If there are any interesting swords in there, I would love to see them. They might only be good for training, but with a little care, who knows? Here, have some oil. And, uh, why exactly are you giving this to me? Like I said, they need a little care. With a bit of maintenance, some of these will really shine. Yes, I heard you. So why did you give me the oil? It's for polishing, Lawrence. Don't tell me you've never polished a weapon before. But that is hardly a task befitting someone of my station. If you had an exquisite blade, something of real historical significance to complement my noble heritage, that would be another matter. In that case, appraise while you polish, you're bound to find something good working through these. 
This seems as fine an occasion as any to air my grievances. I am a highborn noble. As such, it is my sworn duty to protect the common folk. I have no time for trivialities. What's more, you seem to be under the misapprehension that you can order me about. Please think carefully about how you speak to me. I'm not ordering you around. And I'm not talking to you as a noble, either. I'm asking you to help me with this. As a friend. I am your friend, but I am also a noble. Those two qualities are not mutually exclusive. Oh, good. Let's get to it then, buddy. Hey, Marianne, what's she in? Mind if I join you? I'm starving. Uh huh? Oh, um. All my favorite dishes are on the menu today. I might have grabbed too much. You want some? No, thanks. I... All you've got on your plate are leaves. Are you sure that'll fill you up? Uh, I'm done eating now. I have to go. Huh? You're already done eating? But there's still food on your plate. Hey, Marianne! Huh. Maybe she's not feeling well. I should probably go check on her later. Oh, is that so? I'm so happy you found all of that food. A little gray starling told me that you can find berries if you fly out toward the mountains. Oh, I found Marianne. I didn't know she spent her time here. It sounds like she's talking to someone. What's that? You want to try some nectar from the flowers in the greenhouse? That might be tricky. I guess you could try it if I'm already there. Otherwise, you might get locked in. Hey, Marianne! Who are you talking to? <gasps> huh? Oh, the birdie flew off. It, yes, it looks like he has. What are you doing here, Raphael? You were acting a little strange when we were eating earlier, so I wanted to check on you. I was worried. Uh, that's sweet of you, but I'm fine. Are you sure? Well, that's good to hear. As long as... Wait a minute! Were you just talking to a bird? Excuse me? <laughs> I knew it! You can talk to birds! I'm right, aren't I? Uh... uh yes. That's incredible! This place is full of interesting folks. But I didn't think anyone spoke birdie. No, that's not it. This bird just happened to be... speaking human. Amazing! I hope I get to meet a bird who speaks human one day. Hey, Leone. Are you just getting back? Whoa! What's with the bag? It's huge! Oh, this? <laughs> I thought I'd get all my chores done at once. Guess it got a little out of hand. Sorry to be a pain, but could you help me out? I'm happy to help. Where'd you go to get all this stuff? Well, first it was just the cloth scraps from the tailor, and then it was the used oil from a restaurant in town. After that, it was the books the scholars didn't know what to do with. I mean, that was just on the way. Whoa, it sounds like you did a lot of running around today. It wasn't so bad. I just figured it would save time if I did it all in one trip. You planned all that out? Impressive! What are you gonna do with all that stuff you got? The scraps will be good for dishcloths, and I can make soap from the oil. The books are just to help with my studies. You really can't let anything go to waste, can you? Nope. Can't stand the idea. Who knew you were so thoughtful? I mean, with actual thinking ahead. You're so generous to everyone, and always making me food. I never knew how much thought you must put into it. I cook to relax, and it's nice seeing how enthusiastic you get about eating what I make. Whatever I give away is just the stuff that isn't useful to me. I pick up all sorts of things when I'm in town. Giving things like that to people who need them or who can actually use them makes sure they aren't wasted. That makes sense. You've got to use up the stuff you've got, after all. Hey, do you think you're like this because you didn't have much growing up? <laughs> I guess times were tough now that you mention it. The folks in my village definitely aren't rich. My dad had to go through a lot of trouble to get the recommendations I needed to attend the academy. 
That doesn't mean I've grown up to be stingy. It just means I don't like to squander. Anyway, enough of that. It's in poor taste to go on about your own hardships. I've always got time for a meal with a friend, and it so happens I picked up some choice meat today. Why don't we share it? Now you're speaking my language. Good morning, Lysithia. Out for a stroll, are we? It's lovely weather for it. I might go wander outside myself. I'm sure I can see some beautiful sights. Ignatz, hold still, will you? Uh, sure. Your shoes are untied. It looks sloppy. Let me just fix it for you. Oh, thank you for letting me know. But really, I'm perfectly capable of tying them myself. <laughs> Clearly that's not the case. Otherwise, this wouldn't be an issue. Now, hush. Um... There we go. Thanks. You've also got awful bedhead. What? But I examined myself in the mirror before leaving my quarters. It's the back of your head. Quite unkempt. You really should get it together. I mean, really. You're born to a noble adjacent merchant family, aren't you? You really should be more presentable. Sorry, Lysithia. You're always so perfectly put together. In fact, I'd say you're perfect in all respects. I don't think I've seen you fail at anything. Well, consider that if I make even the slightest misstep, everyone will treat me like a child. There's nothing I hate more than that. I see. Well, I think you're very mature. If anything, you may be overdoing it somewhat. I mean, people treat me like a child sometimes. But I like it, because it reminds me that other people care about me. You know? No matter how much we stretch, some things are always beyond us. I think it's fine to be vulnerable and ask for help sometimes. Ignatz, are you really lecturing me about how I conduct myself right now? You're a sheepish, unreliable scatterbrain who can only ever think about what others think of him. Perhaps you should worry about your own maturity before you start questioning mine. Although you certainly look the part of a baby, so maybe that's asking too much. Anyway, I've got things to do, so I'm gonna go now. Uh, Lysithia, wait. Hey! Out of my way. You're such a child, I swear. Hmm. That was uncalled for. After all, I am older than she is. <laughs> Do you mind if I ask you about something? Yes? It's about animal behavior. Among us all, you surely know the most about animals. I've read that in outdoor battles, wild animals can sometimes cause unexpected confusion. What do you think would be the best strategy to... Um, are you listening, Marianne? I was listening. I just don't think I can really... For crying out loud! Why do you always have to admit defeat before even giving yourself a chance? My advice would probably just put everyone in danger. You'd be better off without me. This is beyond ridiculous. You're impossible. You seem convinced you're some sort of cursed being, destined to bring doom and gloom to anyone you encounter. Well... Why do you have such a terrible opinion of yourself? How could you possibly be so dense? I just... Just nothing. Now you listen to me for a moment. I can see that you have some deep-seated turmoil you struggle with. I'll have you know I have quite a few issues of my own. Perhaps more grave than yours, if you can imagine. R really Yes. But I'm not the only one who has such troubles to contend with. Everyone does. That's why it's so important to maintain a positive outlook and do what we can. Each time we find the light in the dark, we grow, bit by bit. And without growth, what's the point in carrying on? Lysithia... I envy your confidence and strength. 
Don't envy me. Instead, just choose to find the positive, won't you? Yes. Well, maybe someday. The time is now! This is your moment! Oh, okay. That's more like it. Now to start, why don't you help me out by answering my questions about wild animals? I'll certainly try my best. Oh, are you sure? Thank you so much. You're always so kind to me. I'll have to repay you sometime. <clears throat> Um, Lysithia? What are you doing there? Don't tell me you were listening just now, and judging me getting other people to do my work for me. I've got better things to do. Although, I do wonder why everyone is always so eager to help you. I only ask for help if they offer. I don't ever pressure people. So I've noticed. That's what strikes me as all. I suppose they're just so taken with me they want to help me out. I see. That would explain it. Oh dear, I was expecting you to argue, not to agree with me right away. There's no reason to deny what's clearly true. Everything about your outward appearance is immaculate and well thought out. Even your fingernails are always well kept and painted. No doubt your toenails are the same. I can't tell if you're complimenting me or accusing me of something. And you smell delightful, like candy. Or wait, am I catching a hint of floral? I'm so glad you noticed. It's oil extracted from a flower that only blooms at night. Floral oils, huh? I didn't think they had much use outside of homeopathy and house cleaning. I have some right here, actually. Here, I can give you a splash. There we go. I put it on your wrist, so you'll want to rub them together. Body heat is what activates the scent. Your wrists and your neck are relatively warm, so they're good spots to apply the fragrance. For a very subtle fragrance, you can also try putting it under your clothing. <sighs> so, what do you think? Mmm, it's lovely. Now I smell just like you, Hilda. Somehow, this makes me feel a little more mature. Thank you. So that's it. She just wants to feel more grown up. She's hard to read, that one. That smile, though. Who knew she could be so cute? <laughs> Lysithia, I have to say, you're really impressive. I respect you a lot, and I thought I should tell you. Uh, okay? It's just, you know, you're four years younger than me, but you work really hard at everything. I mean, when I was your age, I wasted all my time just goofing off and doing whatever I wanted. Doesn't look like much has changed for you since then. And unlike you, I don't have time to waste, so leave me be. Are you going to do some extra magic training? I'd be happy to join you, if you don't mind. What do you want to start with? I am absolutely disinterested in spending any time with you. What is it you want anyway? Clearly, you haven't been listening to a word I've been saying. Perhaps it's because I'm younger, you see fit to ignore me when I speak. Is that it? What? No. Age has nothing to do with it. You're amazing. You're true to yourself. You know what you want and who you are. Not a lot of girls I know can say that. Ah, so it isn't my age that's to blame for you breezing over my wishes. It's my gender. I... what? Where did you get that idea? I'm just trying to praise your smarts and hard work and everything. It's impressive how someone so young... Your lack of self-awareness is deeply troubling. What I'm aware of is you trying to pick a fight. Calm down, kiddo. Look, I'm really busy. Super, extremely, inordinately busy. I've got one last thing to say to you. And what would that be? 
I'm skilled with magic, and my abilities are finely honed. It's not like I need someone for target practice. No, but I do. Stray has caused all this. We cannot let this stand. You must do all you can to find out where she's gone. Now ask around to see what information you can find. Come now, no time to waste. up for a challenge. Did you hear about Flame? It's just one thing after another this year, I swear. Some of the lower-ranked knights are searching for her in the town. If they find anything, I'll know. to let you in to prove it, don't I? There! See? No one's in Bernie's room but Bernie. Maybe Flame just wanted to be alone for a while. Have you considered that? Come to think of it, where is her room anyway?
I heard something like this happened last year, too. Neither the culprit nor the missing student were ever found last time. Some people say it was the work of evil spirits. I thought the same. Could there be a connection? Professor, did you want to talk? Professor? Greetings, Professor. Today, there is quite a bit to report. There is a masked individual who has been going into town every evening and not returning until the following morning. You see? Nothing gets past this guard. I doubt it has anything to do with Flane's disappearance, but... Well, better safe than sorry, I always say. What brings you here? I'm taking a break. This one, yes. I this one, yes. I this one, yes. I this one, yes. I thank you. Return soon, please. Hey, welcome. You have a good eye. You have a good eye. You have a good eye. A pleasure doing business with you. You have a good eye. You have a good eye. A ple you have a good eye. You have a good eye. A pleasure doing business with you. You have a good eye. A ple you have a good eye. A pleasure you have a good eye. A pleasure you have a good eye. A pleasure doing business with you. You have a good eye. A pleasure doing business with you. Good up, up, you have a good 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 up, a pleasure doing business with you. You have a good up, 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 a pleasure doing come again. Hello there. This one, yes, I 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 thank you. This one, yes? I thank you. Return soon, please. Professor? This might be the first time I've ever seen Seteth look so worn down. If poor Flane was lured away by anyone, I personally think the clear suspect is that miscreant from Dusker. 
Those people are deceptive by nature. Young Flame's disappearance is most troubling. If Flame has been taken hostage, then we know she is alive. At least for now. There would be no point to abducting her if simple murder was the objective. That's only logical, Professor. Flame just disappeared. I don't like it one little bit. Oh, are you here to see someone? Alois and Shamir and all the knights are gonna head into town soon. Thanks, Professor. Whoa. I can only imagine how worried Sedeth must be, but... Isn't mobilizing the entire Order of Knights a bit... excessive? I was originally assigned to investigate those reports of the Death Knight in the town near Garrett Mock. When I think how many more victims that dastard might claim while we're all busy searching for Flane... <sighs> I'm sorry, that was insensitive. We're all under a lot of stress right now. It's important that we find her quickly. There have been a lot of rumors swirling around lately about a death knight who kidnaps people from the nearby town. You don't think Flame was... you know, do you? Whether the rumors are true or not, I just hope our Flame is safe. I am not understanding where the meaning is here. When and how is this expression used? I fell for it. No, that is what you say when your body is feeling unwell. The expression is, I fell for it. Are you a stump? I mean, are you stumped? That makes me surprised. Can I ask you about another word? The one that is written here. Mm -hmm. Is something on my face? Is that really what you are thinking? Or maybe you have curiosity about the mark on my face? You are already knowing that I am from Bridget. This is a mark from Bridget. It is a prayer to the forest spirits, a prayer to be protected. Hunters ask the forest spirits to have safe and bountiful hunting. There are many spirits in Bridget. I have more marks on my arms and back. They are prayers for my family's health and triumph. Are you wanting to see them? Oh, I have understanding. I have much gratitude for you, Professor. You always listen with patience. I can read and understand the language of Foglin, but to speak it... Uh, gives me difficulty. I hope I will keep having your support, and I will give you my support too, with my whole heart. I have things that I cannot fail to accomplish. Yes, we will keep walking forward. A moment. Is, it? is something the matter? I see. So, Flane has gone missing. I will do what I can to support the search.
Impressive. Nice work. No sign of her leaving the monastery, huh? That is, assuming we can actually trust that information. Oh, but I'm sure this space has no shortage of secret passages and hiding spots. True. For now, there's not much we can do aside from making a thorough search of the monastery. Let's ask around and see what we turn up. You never know who might have seen something. Can I ask you a favor? Can I ask you a favor? Hello? Flane is missing. We should split up and search for her. There isn't a moment to waste. We must find her before it's too late. Let's see. I've heard the monastery is full of secret passages. If there is no sign of Flame's departure, it is possible that she used one of those. Whatever has happened, I hope... Do you think she's really been kidnapped? I hear Tomas has been going around asking about her. But he's probably just worried like the rest of us. Though it wasn't just Flame. He was asking about you and Captain Gerald, too. Hmm. If Flame were taken hostage, I expect we would have received demands from the culprit by now. Perhaps this is not a kidnapping at all. Do you suppose she could have simply run away? If that is the case, it is unlikely that we will find her anywhere in the monastery. What? Uh. Huh? Ow! Ingrid just about slapped the teeth out of my head. All I did was suggest that Flane might have eloped. I don't know. I was just suggesting things, and suddenly I was seeing stars and Ingrid was yelling at me. Hey. A beautiful, delicate maiden vanishing into thin air? It is like something out of a book. If it were a book, we would have no need to worry. She would be rescued presently by a dashing nobleman. Do you have any idea as to where she might be? Where she might have wandered off to? That is what I thought. Why I am here, in fact. But she is nowhere to be seen. Oh, I was looking for this. Thank you so much. I hope Flane isn't going hungry. If someone really kidnapped her, I'll never forgive them. Now that I think about it, I saw Aloise hanging out by the pond not too long ago. He was always getting into trouble for trying to talk to Flame, you know? It's probably a crazy thought, but I'm starting to worry. Professor! The whole monastery has been turned upside down. I wonder if we're still going to have the Battle of the Eagle and Lion next month. It's a yearly tradition, but with things the way they are right now, it's hard to imagine. At any rate, I hope they find Flane soon. Ah, you're looking for Flane's kidnapper. I can't say anything for sure, but I do have suspicions about Yuritsa. There's something about how he's handling his blade lately. It seems more impulsive than usual. It couldn't hurt to try speaking with him, at least. 
At this hour, I think you'll find him sparring with Catherine at the training grounds. She ran off or got kidnapped or what? I just know that Flane's in trouble. That's it. I can't keep sitting around. I gotta go find her. Now, where do I start? <sighs> to think that Flane would disappear like this. Death must be worried sick. I haven't much to go off of, and perhaps it's out of line for me to feel so uncomfortable. But something has been bothering me for a while about Gilbert. I feel as though I've met him somewhere before. I also noticed him staring intently at Annette once. Hmm. Ugh. <laughs> seen her she's been abducted oh you're looking for her sorry my mind was somewhere else I just recently learned she has a crest did you know that professor if it was a particularly rare crest I could imagine professor Hanneman would have quite an intense interest in her oh no I'm not accusing professor Hanneman of abducting flame professor Young Flame's disappearance is most troubling. What? Who would suspect me? You know what? I'll tell you who. A fool, that's who. Alas, Seteth would never allow that. However, while Flame's major crest of Setlene is rare, there are others who possess it. I've only ever spoken to Flane a handful of times. She always seems so naive about the ways of the world. I'm worried about her. Yes, I'm afraid so. I just hope she comes home safe. Do you really think Flane was kidnapped? I have a feeling you're right. We really need to find her, and quickly. Flane was childnapped. That is what you are thinking? And the villain is inside our monastery? Hmm. I must have admittance. One person has been catching my eye. Shamir is a knight not like other knights. Her movements are being reminders of... No. They remind me of Warriors of Bridget. Before she was here, what was she getting up to? Hey, Professor, have you seen Manuela? I saw her running off somewhere in a terrible hurry. I wonder if it has anything to do with Flane's disappearance. Do you know, Professor? Oh, yes. Didn't you know? She was the senior diva in our opera company. How did you know I lost this? Thank you for bringing it back to me. 
Yes! <laughs> Professor! Professor! I saw him. A knight wielding a gigantic scythe. He was just like the rumors say. All covered in jet black armor. It was the Death Knight! I just know it. You don't think he has something to do with Flane's disappearance, do you? That's so. Uh... Something the matter? I see. So, Flane has gone missing. I will do what I can to support the search. Mm hmm? It seems that you are a bit suspicious of me. Might I ask your reasons? It has been two decades since I last knew Gerald, yet he looks nearly identical to my memory of him. It is only natural to be curious, don't you think? I assure you. There is nothing more to it than that. here. I'm taking a break. Is this about flame? You find me suspicious. <laughs> I was somewhere else, fighting. Is that a problem? I understand that I don't fit in among the Knights of Saros, but that hardly links me to Flame's disappearance. You seem busy, Professor. I'm busy as well. Let's speak later. Professor, did you want to talk? What? Me? Abduct Flame? You can't really believe I did that! Well, this may sound silly, but... I was too scared to even look. I couldn't bear the thought of finding her in its depths. About Flane? Some of the lower ranked knights are certain. What? Yuritsa? Hmm. Come to think of it, I haven't seen him today. What would make you suspect him? I see. Well, I'll let the knights know. Need something, Professor? I'm on an important mission for Lady Rhea. Until that's done, I can't offer any help. Professor, let me sing for you. Do you not like my voice? It would make a Pegasus dance with joy. I'll keep my voice down. Don't want people thinking I'm vying for attention. But how loud is too loud? I've served here at Garrick Mock in some capacity or another for several decades now. But after all that time, even I can't claim to know everything about the layout. Searching the entire interior of the monastery is a more difficult task than you may think. It makes you wonder who designed such a titanic compound. There are fragments of records remaining from its original construction, but none of them name an actual architect. Do 
Dear Goddess, hear my prayer. Please watch over Flame. Please protect her. Um, may I ask a favor? Professor, have you still not found any leads regarding Flane's whereabouts? I have looked everywhere. Not even the knights on guard have seen anything of note. Yes. Let us work together. It reassures me to have you by my side. May the goddess protect dear Flane until she returns to us. Yes, that is surely mine. I appreciate you bringing this to me. seemed a rather odd person. She appears young, yet there's something about her that seems much older than her years suggest. And she's quite wise, but also surprisingly naive. Hmm. You might be right. Whatever the case, Sedith seems to care for her more than anything. Lane's whereabouts are unknown. Pray she is safe. We do not seem to have any leads at present. I am one of the suspects, am I? Well, hopefully I can lay your suspicions to rest. Do you know of my, let's call it, unique situation? I was once a knight in service to the Fargus royal family. If Ingrid believes she saw me before, it was likely in Ferdiad, the kingdom capital. Annette is... she is my... But no, I would appreciate it, Professor, if you would ask no more. Because of Flane's disappearance, all of the knights are searching non-stop. But we haven't found a single lead. Sedith's face is getting paler by the minute. It's hard to watch. What's that? You're looking for Manuela? Well, I did pass by her earlier. She was carrying something. A mask of some sort. I'm not close to the guy, so I can't say for sure. But come to think of it, you could be right. Thank you. 
That is all I can ask. Please, lend me your aid. She would never have left the monastery of her own volition. Why is there not a trace of her to be found? was a big help. <laughs> Professor Manuela ran off with Professor Yuritz's mask? What could that possibly mean? Well, that's suspicious. Sounds like we should try talking to them. Professor Yuritsa is almost certainly in the training grounds or his quarters. Where was that again? Oh, over on the eastern side of the Knights Hall. Again soon. Flame just disappeared. I don't. Oh, Alois. I learned all sorts of things, so I can do as much as possible for Lady Rhea. Cleaning, chopping wood, making feed. Oh, and I'm learning the bow and arrow from Shamir. I'm happy to help you out with anything you need done for your class. You betcha. I'm your guy, Professor. Since, you know, you can't exactly add me to your class or anything. I can't believe Flame just... Oh, are you here to... Aloise? Suspect Blaine's crest, the major crest of Seth Lee, is rare, but there are others who possess it. I can't believe I left this behind. Well, thank you so much for retrieving it. Hey, 
Hey, I've been looking for that. How'd you know? We do not. I am. Well, hopefully, I can lay your suspicions. I was once a knight. If ink for net is. Ah, thank you for bringing me this. Life without it was difficult. Welcome, Professor. This is the first time I have welcomed you here, is it not? <laughs> there is no need to be nervous. Please, come closer. When you speak with me here in this room, you are not speaking with the Archbishop, but with Rhea. It's just me. What a sweet child you are. <laughs> My apologies. I should not be treating you like a child. As Gerald's kin, somehow you don't seem at all a stranger to me. Speaking of Gerald, may I ask if he ever spoke of me to you? Hmm, is that so? Unfortunately, I am unable to believe that such words fell from Gerald's lips. I want you to know that you are free to speak candidly. There is no need to spare me from the truth, however harsh it may be. <laughs> Since you are here, shall I tell you about the Gerald that I knew? By the look of it, you haven't heard much about his time at the monastery, have you? When I first met Gerald, he was quite young. Why, he could not even grow a full beard at that point. On one fateful occasion, the band of mercenaries he belonged to fought alongside the Knights of Seros. I was traveling with the Knights at the time, and Gerald jumped in front of an attack meant for me. He was gravely wounded, on the verge of death. I tended to his wounds in a desperate attempt to save his life. Thankfully, my efforts were not in vain. Gerald managed to escape a seemingly certain death. I made arrangements for him to receive further care at Garrick Mock. The moment he was deemed fully recovered, I invited him to join the Knights. Well, it is not a story I have often repeated. Even at the monastery, there are not many who know that. I tell you this because, to me, you are the child of the one who saved my life all those years ago. And also... Never mind. It is nothing. I simply wanted to say that I trust you. By coming to visit with me today, you have... Well, suffice it to say that my day is brighter than it otherwise would have been. I thank you for that. smell mm, it's amazing my fave in fact do you like it too i appreciate any good meal but nothing beats enjoying my favorite food This is delicious! My absolute favorite! Hmm. I like seeing a table full of my favorite dishes.
That looks delicious. Goddess, forgive me. I've just got to indulge. That looks appetizing. Delicious food really takes my worries away. Eating food always fires me up. Hoorah! Let's go fight somebody! to give my compliments to the chef. This is so good. Can I have seconds? Show us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor. Yeah, you just get it, Professor. This is my favorite. This food is a revelation. <laughs> I can't help but smile when I eat it. Hey, Teach, hold on a minute, okay? I'm gonna have this cleared up in no time. That's okay, I'll be finished soon. I'm just in the middle of mixing up a new poison. And done. What do you think of that, Teach? A colorless, odorless poison. Say, care to test it out for me? Whoa, really? Actually, I was just kidding. If you drink this, in two days' time, you'll have terrible, uh, let's call it stomach trouble. I hear your silent question, Teach. Why the delay? That's so it can be used even if you don't have access to the target when you need the poison to take effect. Uh, naturally, I have no immediate plans for this stuff. I suppose I just felt like broadening the old horizons a bit. When devising schemes, it's best to have as many options at your disposal as possible. Expanding those options is kind of a hobby for me. 
Well, I grew up in an environment where it was necessary to think that way. It's like I told you before, I wasn't born into a life of luxury. Ever since I was a child, I've always been seen as different from those around me. An outsider of sorts. I've been resented and hated. There have even been attempts on my life. I don't believe I've earned such treatment, but that's how it goes for people like me. Thanks, Teach. You know, in many ways, I'm just a normal person like everyone else. But in the right environment, anyone could be seen as an outsider. It can become overwhelming. And that's why I kept running, kept fighting. As a kid, I spent a lot of time licking my wounds and coming up with schemes, trying to keep my nose out of trouble while plotting against my enemies. My parents always told me I wouldn't grow stronger if I didn't learn to fight my own battles. And so in the end, I did. And I grew up to be as independent, as self-reliant as my parents always wished for me to be. Lucky me, right? If anyone knows what I'm talking about, it must be you, eh, Teach? I get the feeling you know what it's like to be an outsider. The moment I first laid eyes on you, I knew you weren't like everyone else. People don't care for folks like that. You do well to watch your back. On the bright side, that's also part of the reason that I find you so interesting. Hello, Professor. May I speak with you? I was just wondering, what do you think of Edelgard? You seem to hold her in high esteem. Well now, that is not what I expected you to say. You clearly have high standards. And what is your opinion of me? I am at least her equal, am I not? Be honest, do not hold back. Pretend that I am just a regular person, not the scion of a noble house. You think she is better than me? I was just being modest before. Honestly, I have always prided myself on being superior to Edelgard. But evidently, that is not your perspective. Hmm. I suppose there is only one thing to do. I must demonstrate my excellence. Precisely. You cannot stop me. I will prove that you have drastically underestimated me. You think I could ignore such a slight upon my honor? Not likely. Come, Professor. We will begin with battle. Edelgard's skills in combat are no match for mine. I heard that just the other day, she defeated a demonic beast without assistance. Well, anything Edelgard can do, I can do better. And in half the time. Professor, you can be my eyewitness and timekeeper. Here we go! Two at once? That's... well... It will be fine. I can't do it. It seems you have saved my life. I... Thank you, Professor. Lady Rhea give you special treatment. You're not particularly strong or good-looking. You seem exceedingly unremarkable. Not that I doubt you were a skilled mercenary. Shamir came from the same background, but she doesn't get nearly as much of Lady Rhea's attention. Besides, it'd be one thing if you got brought on as a knight, but a professorship? Unprecedented. I just don't get it. I'm flummoxed as to why she holds you in such high esteem. And it's not like just anyone can wield the Sword of the Creator. It's a legendary relic, right? And it was casually handed over to you. It's unbelievable. Maybe it's because you're related to Geralt. He was a leader of the Knights of Saros, and probably the finest mercenary in all Fodlan. 
By the time I joined, he was gone. So I don't know him too well, but he's strong, right? Oh, come on. There can't be a soul in Fodlin who hasn't heard tales of the Bladebreaker. Maybe that's it. Geralt used his influence to help you. But Lady Rhea wouldn't give you favorable treatment because of that. No, definitely not. There must be something more to you. Okay, that settles it. I'm going to watch from afar. Figure out what Lady Rhea could possibly see in you. Whatever it is, maybe I can copy it so that you'll take a shine to me as well. And if I discover that your intentions are malicious, I'll cut you down with relish. Professor, have you been looking for me again? I am very busy, you know. I must insist that disruptions for light-hearted chats of this kind be kept to a minimum. <laughs> what did I tell you about falling victim to such salacious and slanderous rumors? As I've told you, there is obviously a conspiracy against me. There is no manner in which I could possibly be considered bothersome. Professor, I assure you, you have been deceived. My adversary has poisoned the hearts of these ladies against me. The plot goes deeper than I thought. All right, let's not get carried away. Please understand, Professor. I am not some scoundrel out for conquest. I am attempting to fulfill my duty as heir of House Gloucester. It is my responsibility to continue our noble line by finding a suitable lady to be my wife. It is a rigorous process. My family has the very highest standards for appearance, grace, temperament, and pedigree. Typically, yes, even if others are sometimes critical of that notion. For the nobility, marriage is not merely a union of individuals. It is also a union of families. It would not benefit House Gloucester to be tied to a family of powerless commoners, would it? To achieve supremacy, it is necessary for my line to be tied to that of an influential family. That is the best path to peace and prosperity for all. So, as you can see, the future of the Alliance rests on my shoulders. If it is a burden, it is one I am all too familiar with. We nobles are born to this duty. That being said, to avoid misunderstandings, I shall restrain myself until things calm down. I would rather not cause trouble for you, after all. Let's do this! We'll be fine. We did okay. I'm beginning to understand. I think it's coming along. This isn't so hard. I passed. Thank you. 
what's on your mind, Ingrid. Actually, if it's something troublesome, can it wait a bit? I am positively exhausted today, so I was gonna turn in early. Don't you try to stop me, you hear? The sun just barely dipped below the horizon, yet you're already preparing for bed? Rising with the dawn and setting with the sun. Isn't that how a life is meant to be lived? I'm almost certain you have never been awake at sunrise, Claude. And how would you know that? You haven't been peeking into my room every morning, right? I'll have you know I like to rise early for my daily meditation. Uh-huh, sure. And I've decided to quit my pursuit of knighthood. At least try to make your excuses more believable. And that yawn just now. You didn't even bother covering your gaping mouth. One would never know you're of noble birth with how you conduct yourself. You need to relax, Ingrid. Deep breaths, okay? A yawn can't hurt, I swear it. Really, you'd better get a hold on that attitude of yours. Otherwise, that pretty face is gonna get all twisted up with angry lines. Guys don't like gals who are always griping at them. Try a smile every now and then. Here, let's practice. On three. One, two, three. You're actually telling me to smile more, aren't you? How common? Hmm. Since you're so insistent upon telling me what my face should be doing, perhaps my blade can restructure your face with a more permanent smile. All jokes aside, are you not house leader? As a leader, you should set a shining example. A position such as yours comes with responsibilities. See that you consider them more carefully in the future. Yes. And just how long do you plan on lounging about yawning like a slob? At least lounge in your own quarters. Um, okay. Honestly, some people... Wow, somebody needs to teach that girl to lighten up. What's wrong with you? Uh, uh, Shamir? <laughs> How long have you been there? Too long. You're blocking my way. Wait, there's something I wanted to ask you. Ask? I... Just make it quick. Well, you see, whenever I go into battle, the enemy seems to find me right away. I'm an easy target. But I want to be able to move around the battlefield without being noticed, like you do. So what do you think? Would it be possible? Do you think you're being noticed because of your size? <laughs> of course! I'm pretty hard to miss, you know. I thought that was obvious. Wrong. It's not your size, it's your presence. It's strong, almost unbearably so. My presence? Is that something I can change? With practice. Maybe. Let me ask you, have you ever felt my presence? Now that I think about it, I haven't. That must be why I didn't notice you earlier. But how can I do that? Will you teach me? Please? Please? <sighs> Fine. There's a breathing technique that masks your presence. When you breathe, are you continuously inhaling then exhaling? Well, of course. That's the best way I know how. I'd explode if I only breathed in. Right. To minimize your presence, breathe in, then out, then out again. In through the nose, then gently out through the mouth, twice. In, out, out. That's it? I can definitely do that. <sighs> I couldn't do it, Shamir! <laughs> Breathe less. Keep it to the absolute minimum. <coughs> I, I don't know the minimum. It'll take some practice. <sighs> sure, sure. I'll keep trying. In, out, out is trickier than it sounds. It was so sunny this morning, but now it's absolutely pouring. Did you hear the thunder just now? Good thing we got all the clothes indoors before the skies opened up. I apologize for troubling you with this task. Don't worry about it. I was just passing by and thought I could help. I know how frustrating it is to have your newly dried clothes soaked by rain. Oh. 
What's wrong? We managed to keep all of the clothes dry, didn't we? It's just... odd. Every time it's my turn to wash the clothing, there's a sudden downpour. Surely it must just be an inconvenient coincidence. But I can't help feeling as though I'm somehow to blame for it. Ah, I see. That probably is your fault. Wow. You're even harsher than I am. You have a crust of Karen, don't you? I do, yes, but... Hold on a moment. How did you know that? I can just tell. I have a crust of Karen, too. And I've noticed that, whenever I need dry weather, there's rain. Don't you think it's our crusts making the rain fall upon us? How had I never connected this? This is quite a revelation. A crest affecting the weather. <laughs> well, I don't know how true it is. There are only the two of us, which is a pretty small sample of people. I suppose that's true. So, we must test our hypothesis. Hmm. Maybe we can find someone who tends to bring the sunshine around. That would be especially handy for helping out with the wash. Now there's an idea. If you don't have any business here, go away. You're bothering me. Finally spotted me, did you? What do you want? They say you're the best. I wanted to see your training with my own eyes. <laughs> Spying on people. Is that a hobby of yours? I hope you got your fill. Enough to see how to beat you, at least. You think you can beat me? That's right. See, I was trained by... Gerald, yes. So you know. I heard he was your teacher. Perhaps we should test you, see how much of your training sank in. I'm ready if you are. Okay, I'll give you a chance. Sounds good. When? I'll let you know. In the meantime, practice. I won't go easy on you. Oh, don't worry. I'll be ready. This will be fun. to start over again.
Never underestimate an outsider. That's the golden deer for you. It's not luck, it's fate. Sorry, but victory is mine. It was a good try. Because we have what's that? She was carrying something. Are you feeling all right? When have you ever seen Flame wearing a mask? Practice yields results. Miss Flane's whereabouts, we do not. I am. Well, hopefully, I. I if ink the net is. just because of my dumb jokes. She says that they're not very good. <laughs> but if I went around kidnapping everyone who said that, the whole monastery would be empty. Professor! What brings you here? Is this about Flane? True. Your point being? I understand that I... But that heart... Practice yields results. Hmm. 
Did you hear some of what? What would make you suspect him? I see. Well, I'll let the knights know. The glory of progress. Professor, that's real nice of you to say. I feel like I've grown a bunch. I got it? Nice! I knew I could get it. This isn't so hard. get excited about. Nope. I've... Not as hard as I thought. Let me ask you something. I see. That might work.
Oh, you didn't invite me here for a duel? Thanks. This is nice. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the tea. Invite me again when you like. Bye. Aha! Found ya! You're always nosing around places, aren't you, Professor? Can be real hard to find you sometimes. Well, yeah. I wouldn't have been running all over the place looking for you if stuff was normal. Do you remember how Lady Rhea asked you to come to the office this evening? Well, she told me that I should come to let you know that today's a bad day for doing that, and you should go and see her tomorrow instead. That's pretty much everything I needed to say, I think. Oh, except to ask you if you've seen Sedith around anywhere. Okay, I'm supposed to tell Seth the thing Lady Rhea told me to tell you, but he's hard to find. No, it's alright, thanks. But if you see him, then please find me and tell me where you saw him, okay? Because then I'll know where he is and I can tell him. I'll be in the stables if you need me. Gotta put out the fodder before it's the next kid's shift. Don't want her thinking I left my work for her to do. Oh, but if I'm not in the stables and you need to find me, I'll be at the forest up north, because there's a bunch of logs lying around up there. I figure I ought to chop them up, or else someone might trip on a log, or we might run out of firewood. And if I chop, then it'll save other people time. If it looks like I'm done there, then the quarters need to be sweeped. So if you see Sedith and you need to find me, then I might be there. Nope, this is my job. I'm not giving it to anyone else, because it's mine and I'm gonna do it. Besides, if you help me out, Lady Rhea might give me an earful. I don't know why, but Lady Rhea sure does seem to like you. She's always worried about what you might be doing or not doing. Oh yeah, not that it's any of my business. Anyways, Lady Rhea asked me to do some jobs, so I'm doing them all. Even some she didn't ask for, but I know need doing, so I'm doing them. End of story. And remember, if you see Sad at the Round, come find me and tell me where you saw him, yeah? Huh? But I just told you where I'd be. If I'm not in the stables, I'll be at the forest. If I'm not... Oh, I see. You're right, I'm all over the place, huh? I don't want to waste your time, Professor, so if you see Sedith, how about you tell him I was looking for him, and then tell him all the places I'll be? Then he can spend his time looking for me instead of you. Yeah! That sounds like a good plan. A real good plan. Let's do that. See you later, Professor. Great timing, Professor. I was just going to come find you. Are you busy? I have a question about formations. I don't understand them at all. Are the speed of battle and the terrain connected somehow? There's too much to memorize. I don't? Then what do I have to know? I think I understand the basics. To start, you just... Ah, okay. I think I've got it. Thanks for the help, Professor. Brains and brawn. You've really got it all. With your help, I should have no trouble becoming a proper knight. Huh? Didn't I tell you? My parents were merchants of the Alliance. They died in an accident. That's why it's up to me to look after my little sis. I'm not great with bookkeeping, so I don't think I'd make a good merchant. I talked to Grandpa, and he suggested I become a knight. 
So I sold all our valuables and used the money to pay my way into the academy. My sis won't survive if I get kicked out. So I can't give up now. I might have tried being a mercenary if I didn't have my little sis to look after. I probably shouldn't say this, but being a mercenary does sound like an easier life. Mercenaries have no responsibilities and no one else to worry about. But someone's got to take care of my little sis, so that's out of the question. Serving as a knight in a noble house is more secure, and you don't have to worry about dying unless there's a war. My sis has been through so much. I don't want her to have to worry about me. Hey, do you have any siblings, Professor? Then you probably think I'm missing out on my freedom, having to support her, huh? But working hard for my sister isn't too bad. Call it a burden, call it a challenge. If it makes my sister happy, I'm happy too. You should ask your father to have some more kids. Anyway, that's why I've got to become a proper knight. Lawrence, what's that expression about? Are you unhappy about something? I hope you don't think I'm stupid enough to let my personal feelings affect me here. <laughs> then don't make weird faces. Keep it together, man. Considering I had to deal with Claude, it went better than expected. You're right. Anyway, time for me to head out. I see. It's all making sense now. I guess I'm still growing. I feel like I get it now. How's this gonna help? You. Just what are you up to? Well, if it isn't Lawrence. Yes, it is. Try not to sound so affronted. And you're just whimsically wandering the monastery grounds again, I suppose? Oh, naturally. After all, I really do adore the Garrick Mock Monastery. No, I think not. That impish look on your face does not suggest innocence. You are up to something. Lawrence, control yourself. Let's not start throwing around baseless accusations. It's not proper. This monastery is packed with a thousand years of history. Well, five years shy of a thousand if we're going for accuracy. Those pillars, these walls, even the floor, they've all seen more than we can possibly imagine. Our distant ancestors may have walked these very halls. Doesn't that excite you? Perhaps, if this were a discussion about art, but I'm afraid walls and floors are not sufficiently interesting to hold my attention. Nor will they suffice to distract me from what is plainly suspicious about you. House Regan was on the brink of collapse until they suddenly revealed you as their legitimate heir. That was only a year ago. Where were you before then? Are you even a true heir to House Regan? If I weren't truly of House Regan descent, how do you imagine I acquired my crest? A crest is insufficient. I am referring to your noble disposition, or lack thereof. Well, that's what I came here to hone, after all. I can only hope that you will assent to instruct me in the art of snobbery, Professor Lawrence. I do not think you grasp the significance of the responsibility you bear. Do you even know what it means to lead the Leicester Alliance? I take no pleasure in saying this, but much of the chaos in our ranks right now is due to the failings of House Regan's leadership. I intend to set things right. And once I expose you for the fraud you are and reclaim my rightful place, that is precisely what I will do. To be blunt, it would have been better had you never shown your face here. Sheesh, that guy. He just can't be reasoned with. <laughs>
professor. Delicious food really takes my worries away. This is my favorite. I am rather happy you went out of your way to pick it, Professor. This dish. It was my father's favorite. This looks delicious. Let's eat. That looks delicious. Goddess, forgive me. I've just got to indulge. Oh, my favorite food. You've got to try this. Professor! I was thinking... Some of what? What would make you so spicy? Practice yields results. Miss hmm. Flay, we do not. I am. Well, hopefully, I can lay your sister. I if it net is. Practice yields results. May the God The glory of progress.
No, I just got lucky. Okay. It's fun when you know what you're doing. <laughs> Don't stop. Keep it coming. <laughs> Getting the hang of it. I, I got it. Nice. I knew I could get it. Oh, thanks, Professor. That's real nice of you to say. I. I. This isn't so hard. I Professor. Hello, Professor. You're really on the move today. A lot to get done, I take it? I'm happy to help. Uh, tell me, is there anything I could do to lighten your load a bit? Oh, surely there must be something. Don't be shy about asking for help. We're practically siblings, after all. Cut from the same cloth. I was raised by Gerald just as you were, so we should have no trouble getting along. Huh? <laughs> Did I not mention that? How thoughtless! What an embarrassing gaffe! 
My parents died when I was small, and I came to live in the monastery. It was an aimless existence. But sometimes, a knight would pass by, wearing magnificent armor. That knight was Geralt. And the first time he laid eyes on me, he made me his squire. What was he thinking, huh? No kidding. I don't think I'll ever fully understand his logic. Later, I heard that the squire preceding me had died of a terrible plague. I looked a bit like him and was about the same age, so... Gerald thought me a suitable replacement. A little nutty, old Gerald, there's no doubt about that. Quite a character. All that was more than 30 years ago. How oh, time flies. Actually, I'm not entirely sure. You never asked him? Well, Gerald hardly seems to have aged since then. In fact, over drinks he once told me, uh, <laughs> Perhaps that's a story for another day. At any rate, that's Gerald for you. One of a kind. I don't think there's anyone else quite like him. Right. Well, now you've heard my whole story. I hope that you understand now why I feel such a strong sense of attachment to you. If you're ever in a bind, just give me a holler. I'll help however I can. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> well, I'll uh, let you get back to it. But truly, if I can take anything off your plate, don't hesitate to let me know. Professor, thank you for helping me with my training. I'd love to do this again if possible. Your advice is always so useful. Everyone thinks you're a wonderful teacher. You account for people's weaknesses while capitalizing on their strengths. Initially, I wasn't sure you paid too much attention to your students. Clearly, I was wrong. After all, were that the case, you wouldn't be capable of providing such useful feedback. I'll continue to learn and grow from your instruction, Professor. I just know it. You think I'm determined? <laughs> Professor, I... Thank you. You're the only one who's ever praised me like that. I mean, people are always telling me I've got a knack for magic. If you can call the power of my crest a knack, they aren't wrong, per se. Though bearing two crests isn't a gift I ever asked for. Anyhow, I've made a point to work harder than most, and not rely too heavily on the power they bestow. So I find it frustrating that the only praise I seem to receive is directly related to that power. If you've noticed how hard I work, then well, it just... It makes me very happy. Well... You see... I... It is because... I am the only child of House Ordelia. I must do all I can for my family name. I'm determined to someday be of real value to them. And that day must come soon. I can't waste any time. I don't have much of it left. Anyway, I should be going. Thank you again for your help. <laughs> Lawrence, what's that expression about? Are you unhappy about something? I hope you don't think I'm stupid enough to let my personal feelings affect me here. <laughs> then don't make weird faces. Keep it together, man. For Claude and I to work together so well is nothing short of a miracle. You really think it's that big of a deal? Well, it all ended well, and that's the important thing.
Aha, Lysithia. It's wrong to tease, yet I can hardly help myself. I know a secret. Your secret, in fact. I think you mean a baseless rumor. Why are you wasting your time? And mine, for that matter. Well... It's a secret that could completely overturn what is considered common knowledge in Crest Research. Shut your mouth! Just... <sighs> Let's go talk somewhere other than here. Okay, where did you hear about it? There was a sort of accident in Professor Hanneman's room. I should have figured. You haven't told anyone, have you? Of course not. If someone else were to learn you have two crests, I might lose you as a test subject. <sighs> Please stop talking so loudly. So what if I have two crests? If you insist on speaking of it, please do so quietly. My intuition was correct. You do have two crests. Wait, what? Did you just trick me? Trick is such a strong word. I think of it as testing a hypothesis. The truth is, I simply made an educated guess. Uh, well, now that I've confirmed it for you, there's not much I can do. I disagree. For example, you could tell me if you were born with them, or is the source magical? What does it feel like to use both crests at the same time? Is it pleasant, painful, euphoric? Enough is enough! I am done talking about this! As though I'd speak of this to the likes of you! I understand her desire for privacy, but to refuse my request for knowledge? It's... well... it's rude. That's odd. I'm sure I just had it a moment ago. Um... Ah, ghost! Actually... The goddess, protect me! I... Uh, huh? Um, Ash, does this key belong to you? I found it by the door. Marianne! I'm so sorry. <laughs> yes, that's mine. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And my apologies for scaring you. No, I'm the one who should be sorry. Kind of ridiculous, mistaking a friend for a ghost. No, that's okay. I guess I do look like one. No, of course you don't. It's just, I, um... In the dark, with your head down like that, and, and with your hair covering your eyes, I... Does that make me look scary? No, oh, please stop. I'm sorry that I look so ghastly. Why not just lift your head up a little? Up? You mean like this? Yes, that's so much better. With some light on your face, you don't look scary at all. That's great. You look completely normal now. Actually, you're pretty cute. What did you say? N nothing. Um, just keep your head up and smile. I promise you'll never be mistaken for a ghost again. Keep my head up and smile? I'm sorry, but I don't think I can. What? Hey, hey wait. Uh, is it something I said?
me. Well, I was too. What bring is this about Flane? I was I under but that heart. again. Keep my voice down. Don't want people thinking I'm vying for attention. But how loud is too loud? Regardless of the quality, this is a good chance for us to prove our solidarity. Goddess Pit. Practice yields results. I love to cook. What are we making today? That's so. I have a lot of experience in the kitchen. I can make just about anything. Wow.
This is so good. Can I have seconds? Ooh, this is my favorite. You've got great taste. This food is a revelation. <laughs> I can't help but smile when I eat it. I would be liking that greatly. That looks delicious. Goddess, forgive me. I've just got to indulge. Eating food always fires me up. Hoorah! Let's go fight somebody! better when I get to share it with you. I feel the same. Let's fill up so that we feel good and energized. Been an enormous help. Thanks so much. Excuse me. I have some more supplies that just arrived for the infirmary. Oh, were there more? I thought I'd gotten them all. I just have bandages and other small things, but there might be more coming. Well, I just got the boys to bring in the heavy bottles. Looks like we can't fit all of it without some rearranging, though. You know, if you'd arrived earlier, you could have helped me tidy up. My apologies. I don't really need your apologies. I need your help. Oh, okay. How can I help? How can you help? I said tidy up, didn't I? See the shells there? See if you can clear out some space and tuck away the bandages. I can try. Careful, Marianne. There's some strong stuff in those bottles. I'm sorry, I... No, look. Just leave the bandages for now and move the bottles from the shelf. I can do that. Uh, now the bandages fell. Ah, uh, no! So in the end, I did it all by myself. I'm sorry that I was no help. I just got in your way. It's fine. We'll even it out with pastries. You want me to get you pastries? I guess I can. You seem so thoughtful and composed, but you're surprisingly clumsy. It's such an odd mix. I practically have no choice but to take over for you. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Isn't it nice, taking a moment to relax? You're very thoughtful, Professor. 
So much better than those nobles around here. Why, thank you so much! Mm, how warm! hymns. I don't want to offer silly songs to my goddess. That was a lovely cup of tea. Thank you, Professor. Please call me again. much either. Am I a nuisance to you, Professor? If so, I'll leave. Of course, my adoptive father may not understand, but if I must... Oh, my adoptive father is one of the new nobles of the Alliance. His territory is to the north. He was a distant relative who took me in after my parents vanished. He's blessed with great drive and ambition. Some may go so far as to call it avarice. He wishes to marry me off to a powerful noble. That's why he sent me to the academy. If I left now, I'm sure he'd have a strong opinion about it. Ah, oh, sorry. I strayed away from the topic. I'm not good at telling stories either. Ah, good. I'm glad. So, as I was saying, are you sure I'm not bothering you, Professor? Oh, I'm so grateful to hear you say that. What I'm trying to say is, you should keep your distance. I'm more trouble than I'm worth. You only say that because you don't know the real me. I'm sorry, I have to go. judgment.
Still no sign of Flane. What should we do, Teach? I'll admit, I'm out of schemes here. Professor! Claude! Something's very wrong. Please, hurry to Professor Yuritsa's room. Yuritsa? Ah, the combat professor with the mask. He has always been rather suspicious. We must hurry. Knock, knock. Is anybody... Whoa! Professor Manuela! I heard a scream coming from here just moments ago. It must have been Professor Manuela. She's unconscious. She was clearly attacked by someone. Hey! It kind of looks like Professor Manuela is... pointing at something. So we follow where she's pointing and... Oh. What do we have here? There's a rather suspicious hole behind that shelf. What is the meaning of... Wait, is that Manuela? What happened here? We must take her to the infirmary immediately. You, don't just stand there. Help me carry her. Right, right. Hold down the fort for me, Teach. I'll be back once we get Professor Manuela taken care of. What could have happened here? And where is Professor Yuritsa? This must be related to that girl's disappearance. What if she's being held captive down there? Oh, no, no, that, I mean, that's crazy, right? Right. It's scary, but... Okay. Don't be a coward, Ignatz. We'll be fine, as long as we stick close to the professor. Oh, you're right. Well, what should we do? We've got to investigate. Lead the way, Professor. The culprit could be hiding inside, so let's be extra cautious. Oh, it's way too creepy down here. And it smells funny. And... Ah! A person! They're unconscious. Yes! It's Flane! Oh, but there's someone else, too. Someone is coming. At Scythe. Could it be the night we fought at the Holy Mausoleum? That sword. You must be. One of us will die. The other will live. I will enjoy this dance of damnation. Is that the one? Thanks a bunch!
Better tell my brother about this.
Professor, we need to defeat the Death Knight and then rescue Flame. Hmm, look at that strange tile over there. I bet something will happen if you step on it. Stay focused. I stand ready. Can't compete with me. I am still far from my best. worked out.
how much more I can learn. Muscles proud. bit uneasy. underestimated me. Any time. Hey, hey.
contraptions on the floor. I just worked harder. Takes care of that. Can't get comfortable. Watch out! Appreciate that.
Well done. Thank you. more I can learn. much more than that. Thank you. 
can use it, but who knows what'll happen. So you have come. I'll make sure you never leave. Celebrate later. What is that? We must all do our part. Another one down. Gotta keep improving.
That helps. Thank you. Let's do this. As expected. I'm getting better. worked out. I feel 
Stronger. Thank you. You say Another one down. So nice of you. I'm beginning to understand. I'm a bit uneasy. Thanks so much. Should have trained better. I think I've gotten stronger. Thank you. 
Better be careful. Ready anytime. I'm sorry. Thank you. Appreciate that. are paying off. Thank you. The helps. 
That helps. Sorry. Actually won! Seems I've exhausted this topic.
die together. How oh, joyous. We'll support you. It's time. Such power dwells within. Stay focused. I stand ready. Thank you. Ready when you are. Thank you. Ready anytime. Oh, nice. I got this. Thanks. You're too kind. Much needed. Let's get to it. Another step forward. Leave it to me. Mastery at last. Well done.
I'm definitely tougher. Kill them. Halt, you're having a bit too much fun. You are getting in the way of my game. Huh. You'll have more opportunities to play soon. Your work here is done. Understood. I will go. We will cross paths again. I am the Flame Emperor. It is I who will reforge the world. Flame Emperor, eh? Seems quite frightened of us, if you ask me. <laughs> He's gone. We should get these two out of here. Let's get out of this horrible place. Come on, we can carry them up. They're both alive. Thank goodness. You actually found Flane? Nice work. It is a shame you could not be there, Claude. I would have liked for you to witness our mortal struggle against the Death Knight. Hey, at least we managed to rescue Flane and complete our mission. That's what counts, right? Right. Excellent work, everyone. Now then, let's get these limp ladies to the infirmary, shall we? No problem. I can carry them both at once. Be gentle with them, Raphael. Let us carry each one individually, and slowly. You know, Teach, seeing you smile sure makes me feel better. You look happy for a change. Hmm? Do you really not know? Well, truth is, I've never seen you smile before now. At times, it made me wonder whether you were even human. But I suppose that was just my imagination running wild. Anyhow, we probably kept Sedith waiting about as long as he can stand. Let's hurry up and tell him the great news. Professor, please allow me to express my eternal gratitude once more. Flane is safe and sound, and I have you to thank for that. Mere words could never express how thankful I am. I... I am indebted to you. Yes, of course. I shall express my gratitude to the students as well. Her kidnapper was the masked knight who vanished during the Rite of Rebirth. The one known as the Death Knight. Considering the circumstances, it seems plausible to assume that his true identity is Yuritsa. And we cannot forget about the mysterious Flame Emperor. His true motives are yet unclear. However, I have an idea. I believe the enemy may have been after Flane's blood. The blood that flows through her veins is special. It is extremely rare and extremely dangerous. If enemies who know the secrets of Flane's blood have appeared, our only option is to leave the monastery and go into hiding. Brother, wait. Flane, what are you doing here? You should be resting. I do not like the path of your thoughts. I do not wish to live in some lonely, remote location where I never get to see anyone. Not ever again. If we stay here, you may be targeted again. Wouldn't it be better for the two of us to live in peace? Even if we ran off to some new, secret location, there is no guarantee that they would not find us. That is why I believe it would be safest to stay in the monastery, where we are surrounded by capable knights and professors. I see your point. I do. However... You know it is the only reasonable option. What if I were to join the professor's class? You think so too? I am so very pleased to hear that. With a professor like you nearby, I shall be safe no matter what foe should appear. I see. I am afraid you have a good point. Professor, 
Due to my position, I have closely scrutinized everything about you. After all that has happened, I must admit that you are indeed a trusted ally. So what say you? Can I entrust you with Flame's safety? I am so glad that Flame is safe. Yet I can't help but wonder what the story is about that other girl. She wore the uniform of the Academy, but who is she? Well done, Professor. I see that I was right to ask your class for assistance. I have been told that Manuela and Flane are recovering nicely, as is Monica. Monica, the girl you rescued along with Flane, is also a student of the Officer's Academy. However... She is a student from last year's class. She went missing just before she would have graduated. It never occurred to us that something might have happened to her in the monastery. We assumed she had run away. I never dreamed that we would find her. Not like this. Monica has asked to rejoin the Black Eagle House once she has fully recovered. Our enemies are still out there, so we must remain cautious and continue our investigation. However, we must also help the students to move on from this incident. After all, the Battle of the Eagle and Lion will be held in Grander Field next month. Yes, the students will remember it for the rest of their lives. Please guide them so that they may show us their best at the coming battle. So, you'll be going to Grander Field next month. You've never been there before, have you? There is unease in the western side of the Empire, but everything east of the capital, Anbar, is stable. Well, there was a noble rebellion a short while ago, but it didn't amount to much. Sorry, but I've got my own mission, and it's far from Grander Field. The Church has always been quick to make use of those who work for them. What I'm more concerned about is finding out who among us is pulling the strings. Ever since the Rite of Rebirth, strange groups have been seen around Garag Mach and elsewhere too. There was also an incident where some knights investigating these suspicious strangers turned up dead. Not that it's likely, but if something like that ever happens to me, search this room, every corner, behind every shelf, I'm going to leave something for you. Don't get me wrong, I have no intention of dying. I know it would be too much to ask you to cheer up, but can you at least drop the serious... <laughs> well, I'll be. Was that a smile just now? <laughs> 